of Du Bois. Dr. Anthony Montero is in studio and he is going to give us all things Du Bois related <laughs> and connected to contemporary society and issues and make sure we contextualize it in a way that it also becomes some, some history you can use, like we do the news you can use. So welcome to the show. Thank you very much. How are you doing today? Doing well, doing yeah, well. It's a pleasure to see you. You know, um, I was listening to your discussion this morning about the Catholic priests mm. and the ongoing uh, crisis yeah. within the Catholic Church. It's very, very important. Mm. And I'm reminded of uh, an essay, 1920 essay by W.E.B. Du Bois, mm. entitled The Souls of White Folk. Mm. And uh, what he says in that essay is, uh, who are they to judge us? given their own history, given their own uh, moral, in many respects, depravity, mm -hmm. given that the greatest and horrific wars of this century and others uh, are attributed to European civilization. So he says, let us look at the souls of white folk, and he flipped the script. And that's what we have to do, because going forward, the question is, uh, what of this world, mm. the white world, white civilization, can be taken into the next world, the world of human freedom? So, yeah, man, it's uh, this is deep. Uh, the crisis is total. You know, it's the Catholic mm -hmm. Church. It's the U.S. presidency. It's the U.S. political system. Uh, it's just everywhere we look. So, uh, yeah, I, you know, so, you know, last week we started... Um, reading uh, Du Bois' writing on women. Yes. And uh, we talked about Josie. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's going to be a three-part series, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right, from the souls of black folk. And today I'd like to talk about a sister named Zora All right. uh, from an, uh, a novel that he published in 1909 called The Quest of the Silver Fleece. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, let me just kind of set it up. You know, Du Bois was a historian, and one of the foundations of his historical understanding, or his understanding of history, was the constancy of black strivings and black struggle mm -hmm. in the modern world. In other words, since the transatlantic trade in human beings and plantation slavery and the rise of modern capitalism. Mm -hmm. Du Bois argues that there's one constant, and that is the strivings of the formerly enslaved and enslaved Africans. And this novel, The Quest of the Silver Fleece, is an attempt to discover and articulate that striving. And most often in his writings, he saw the crystallization of black strivings in black women. Mm -hmm. And so we did Josie last week. Remember, he referred mm -hmm. to her as a moral hero. She was the foundation of her family. But mm -hmm. the struggle and the aspiration was so difficult that when he, you know, Du Bois returned uh, to Fisk University and, and where he first met Josie, and Josie had died. Mm -hmm. And so then in 1909, he writes about this woman, Zora. And Zora uh, is in Alabama. She lives in what is, you know, what they call back then the swamp, the backwoods of Alabama. And uh, she didn't look uh, uh, positively upon education or white education. And she falls in love with a, a man named Blessed. Uh, and his, they just called him Bless. And Blessed uh, was striving to be educated, but Zora was not. Mm. Now, they had a little uh, disagreement, and they hadn't seen each other for a year. So what I'm going to read from is when they uh, re-encounter each other. So passed a year, and there came the time when her wayward teasing and the almost painful thrill of her tale telling nettled him and drove him away. For long months he did not meet her until one day he saw her deep eyes fixed longingly upon him from a thicket in the swamp. He went and greeted her, but she said no word, sitting nested among the green wood with passionate proud silence until he had sued a, a long for peace 
Then, in sudden new friendship, she had taken his hand and led him through the swamp, showing him all the beauty of her swamp world. Great shadowy oaks and limpet pools, lone naked trees and sweet flowers, the whispering and flitting of wild things and the winging of furtive birds. She had dropped the impish mischief of her way, and up from beneath it rose a wistful, visionary tenderness, a woman. A mighty, half-confessed, half-concealed, striving for unknown things, he seemed to have found a new friend. And today, after he had taken Miss Taylor, their teacher, home and supped, he came out in the twilight under the new moon and whistled the tremendous note that always brought her forth. Why did you speak so to Miss Taylor, the teacher, he asked reproachfully. She considered the matter a moment. You don't understand, she said. You can't never understand. I can see right through people. You can't. You never had a witch for a mammy, did you? No. Well, then, you see, I have to take care of you and see things for you. Zora, he said thoughtfully, you must learn to read. And she answers, for what? So that you can read books and know lots of things. Don't white folk make books, she asked. Yes, most of the books, he answered. Pooh, I know more than they do now. I heap more. In some ways you do. But they know things that give them power and wealth and make them rule, he said. She answered, no, no. They don't really rule. They just think they rule. They just got things, heavy, dead things. We black folks has got the spirit. We're lighter and, uh, and cunninger. We fly right through them. We go and come again just as we want to. Black folks is wonderful. He did not understand what she meant, but he knew what he wanted, and he tried again. Even if white folks don't know everything, they know different things from us, and we ought to know what they know. They appeal to her, this appealed to her somewhat. I don't believe they know much, she concluded, but I'll learn to read and just see. It will be hard work, he warned, but he had come prepared for acquiescence. He took a primer from his pocket, and lighting a match, showed her the alphabet. Learn those, he said. What for, she asked, looking at the letters disdainfully. Because that's the way, he said, as the light flared and went out. Mm. Well, now, <laughs> this is very interesting. Mm. It, is, it is the dichotomy between mm. the knowledge of the people that knowledge that Zora had by living mm -hmm. on the earth and that knowledge that Blessed sought through going uh, the way of white knowledge. And mm -hmm. I think that's a clash uh, or a dichotomy that we experience today. Oh, yeah. And how do we discover the truth? And how do we use the truths that we discover, as they say, to make us free? Mm. Now, do you want to talk to some of these, these callers that might be interested in... in Whatever. Okay, so we're going to take a quick break and allow you all to call in because I know we got Du Bois fans out there um, we're doing the year <laughs> du of Du Bois. Fan. You know, cause that's how they do it. You know, they don't, they don't just take the good parts of each person. You know, they do it like NFL out here. They'd be like, I'm not riding with them. I'm riding with the boys. Yeah. I'm like, it's not, it's not the Bloods and Crips, man. It's, it's, it's the Eagles. Like, you yeah, can, we do it all. Yeah, you, you can like all the scholars. You can get something good at all of them. But I know some team Du Bois is out there. I'm still with Du Bois, but you say what you want to say. <laughs> He's my favorite. Well, now's your time. Now's your time. 215-634-8065. 215-634-8065. And it's always good to have these, these lively discussions yes. about history so the young people can understand the importance of reading these stories and understanding mm -hmm. why they make sense today. Because a young person says, those happened a long time ago. But in conversation, sometimes they're able to realize and recognize why it's so important for them to look back and read. Mm -hmm. So after the break, we're going to make sure we do that. I am Aaron Smith, the rapper.
rapping professor in studio with Dr. Anthony Montero, Year Du Bois. She is Queen Kuesa, super producer. Put some respect on her name. And we thank you for waking up with Word, y'all. There are big things happening behind those small sounds. Homework turned in. Benefits researched. And job applications submitted. Make big things happen at home with Internet Essentials from Comcast. Internet Essentials from Comcast gives you access to high-speed home internet for $9.95 a month. Low-income veterans, families eligible for the National School Lunch Program, and HUD housing recipients may qualify. Visit internetessentials.com to apply. No credit check, contract, or installation fee. Taxes extra, restrictions apply. Brown's ShopRite of Fox Street, Fox Chase Cancer Center, the Family Practice and Counseling Network, Susan G. Komen, and Uplift Health Solutions will host a day-long mobile mammography screening event today from 11 a.m. until 4 p.m. at the ShopRite of Fox Street, 2800 Fox Street at Roberts. Now is the time to take care of your body. Include a mammogram into your annual health screenings. Start today at Brown's ShopRite of Fox Street in partnership with Fox Chase Cancer Center. Most of my family, they never graduated high school, so I'm trying to break that barrier. My daughter, Brooklyn, was also a motivation for me to go back to school. Every day after work, went straight to school, and it paid off. At age 26, Kareem finished his high school diploma. I could not have done it alone. I see the future is really bright for me. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. Man, do I love card night. You ready, boys? You got a king? Go, fish that. Oh, come on. <laughs> this is WWE superstar Titus O'Neil. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Learn more at 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Listening to Wake Up With Word on Word Radio, 96.1 FM and 900 AM WURD, Independent Black Media. Independent Black Media, 900 AM, 96.1 FM, WURD, WURDradio.com. Listen live anytime and log on. Make sure you keep that date. August 23rd is Founders Day, Central Branch of the Free Library, broadcasting live all day. Doors open at 9. At this time, we are talking with Dr. Anthony Montero, the year of Dubai. Boys, and on the phone lines we have Tiffin, no, Timothy, Timothy <laughs> from South Philly, talking about Du Bois. Good morning, good brother. Hey, good, good morning, uh, Dr. Smith, and good morning, Dr. Matero. Good, good morning, Tim. Hey, I, you know they say Du Bois writings are like his pen was like a sword, mm -hmm. and that he could cut through and bring about truth. I think he did a very good job in doing fiction. But Dr. Matero, not too long ago, we had an incident in the Sixth Ward, where a, two, they claim two young youth hung a doll mm -hmm. uh, by a tree. <clears throat> and it was sophisticatedly a knot that it looked to me like it was more sophisticated than a child could do. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking about that area, and I thought about uh, Mother Bethel, Richard Allen. Mm -hmm. I thought about where Du Bois lived on Rodman Street. I thought about what Cheney University once was called the Youth to Colored, uh, the School for Colored Youth. Institute for Colored Youth. youth. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. And I also thought about moving from the 6th and 7th Ward, coming across Broad Street, to the 30th Ward, where uh, Julian Abel was who designed the art museum mm -hmm. and uh, the library. And I said to myself that those areas are to be protected by us who should know our history. Mm -hmm. Same thing with mm -hmm. Mother Bethel's uh, Grove Yard was at Fourth and Catherine. And Du Bois wrote a very good article, and I, I, I am a fan of the crisis. In 1919, he wrote The Returning Soldier. Mm -hmm. And with that returning soldier, they brought back these souvenirs and gifts. And what they learned in that military I looked at Du Bois's article as saying, if we got to pick up what we got to pick up by any means necessary, particularly we have, it's necessary even today. Yeah, definitely. Uh, with the returning soldiers are. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, it's very interesting what you said in light of um, 
you know, what I read this morning, because, you know, um, this question of by any means necessary or by all means appropriate uh, is a way of talking about, at least in a Du Boisian sense, of the paramount nature of knowledge, and not just school learning, but knowledge that comes from experience. And that's, and that's what this woman, Zora, and her, uh, who would be her, her husband, Blessed, uh, uh, were about. And they fused these two sources of knowledge, and they discovered this seed, this cotton seed, that uh, was an unusual seed and would produce wealth. And um, they discovered it, but it was stolen from them and uh, by white planters, and they ultimately uh, landed again in poverty. But what I think he was getting at, in spite of the tragedy of it all, was the constancy of the striving and of the struggle, and uh, and also this question of knowledge, uh, what are the sources of knowledge, how do we discover truth, and how truth is so central to our struggles. Very good. Thank you, Tim. I'll for more. Yeah. All right, thank you so much. We also have uh, Frank from Cobbs Creek calling to talk about Du Bois. Good morning, Brother Frank. Uh, sir, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the boy said that uh, we will never be taught our history by the white man hmm. because the South is embarrassed because they fought for slavery. Mm -hmm. The North <clears throat> is embarrassed because it took the black troops to win democracy. <laughs> and, you know, I was going through some records and uh, some old records and um, a pad that I had, and I came across a letter from the boys thanking Asa Gordon. <laughs> for supporting him, and they were supporting each other. Asa Gordon wrote, wrote a book on the Negro in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And Asa Gordon's son has figured out the Constitution, the electoral process, and beat the white man at it. Mm -hmm. But uh, <clears throat> we are not talking to Asa Gordon son who was with the Douglas Institute of Government in D.C. We are, are, are avoiding taking that fight to Trump. And, and you know, we're teachers. Uh, and we, we got teachers, uh, teachers and lawyers at Temple University. And they, uh, and, and we are complaining about what what we are being taught, not being taught. You know, there was a, uh, a colleague uh, when, when when they had a problem with him, the comments that he made at this college Keen. in uh, in, uh, in in New Jersey. Keen comments. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, the the lawyer there, she she the the governor there, she wanted to show this movie. I uh, shouldn't have listened all the school. Well, thank you for your call, Brother Frank. And the book he was referencing was Sketches of Negro Life and History in South Carolina by Asa H. Gordon. Again, Sketches of Negro Life and History in South Carolina by Asa H. Gordon. Sister Cheryl from Sickleville, New Jersey. Thank you for calling and waking up with word. You're online with Dr. Anthony Montero. Uh, good morning, and thanks for accepting my call. Peace and blessings, Dr. Montero. How are you? I'm just great. I just wanted everybody to know that I have attended... I, I believe every one of your um, forums on Dr. Du Bois wow. and have been educated by you for over 20 years. Thank you, Dr. T. Yeah, thank you for coming. You know, You're welcome, too. And listening to your, your, your read on Zora, mm. I also, I, you know, I tie, tie to me to how 
the founder of the MOVE organization, John Africa, taught the MOVE people. Mm-hmm. He didn't much believe in the... Uh, right. The Interesting. Group. Yes. Yeah. So I just tied that, that in. And he told them that they would get it. It was innate. And they would get the education that they needed as they, you know, when it would come to them. And now looking at them from children, they all own their own businesses. And they learned the alphabet. They learned word. You know, they learned. They made the computers. They learned everything they could without being inducted into the uh, school system that's taught by the. You know. Yeah, here. you know that's a very interesting point that you raise because you know I'm friends with many of the Move members, in particular Pam Africa and Ramona Africa. And, uh, you know, we've discussed, especially with Pam, we've discussed this so often. And, you know, Du Bois's idea was a fusion of the two, of the people's innate knowledge, uh, which pretty much was uh, uh, what came from Africa and the life that they lived before this country, but fusing that with knowledge of the modern world. Uh, I think that's the key. Now, Du Bois, because he did believe in all forms of knowledge, uh, privileged the historically black colleges and universities as places where young people would have their first uh, experience of, quote, higher education. And I think those black colleges still represent a major part of what uh, we would call our freedom struggle. I, I, you know, I see a difference between uh, young people who have gone to black colleges mm-hmm. and those who have gone to uh, white colleges. But yeah, I, I agree with you very much, and I think the yeah. move example is very, very interesting. And you know, yeah. if I could just, I don't want to interrupt you, but you know, I would, you know, in a lot of ways, I would compare um, Ramona. Africa to Zora. Mm. I think they're very mm-hmm. similar. Um, so I would say, yeah, thank you for yeah, that point. Yeah. When, yes. I, when I was listening to you, that's exactly yeah. where I, I drew my attention to. I also, if I have one second, I'd like to remind our listeners of the uh, court hearing for Mumia. Yes. It will be on Thursday, August 30th, you know, at 13th and Filbert. And we really need a strong showing there at 8 a.m. at uh, 13th and Filbert at the Injustice Center. This is a time where we can make our own history. You know, uh, we have new evidence that proves that the former DA, Ron Castile, who prosecuted Mamiya's appeal, he violated due process. It is so important that we understand that and that we make a force. We show a force because um, they took part. He took part in deciding against Mumia's appeal. And there's a new law that Mumia should be granted. And no one's going to give it to us. We, the power of the people is going to have to do that. Just like we brought Janet home, we got to bring Mike home and all of the political prisoners. And I really do thank you for this time, um, Professor Smith. Thank you so much. Yes, and thank you. thank you, Dr. Montero, for keeping the voice's legacy alive. It works. It works. Thank yes. you. Thank you, Cheryl. So good to hear On you. On the move. Yes. Thank you. Now, that was a, an applicable analogy. We had a caller earlier that didn't know what an analogy quite was. And that's that's what you call an analogy. Yeah. You know, she compared those things for the sake of clarification. She, you know, that, that's, that's, that was great. You, you know, know, that, that was circle. very interesting and apropos what you said to make... Du Bois relevant Mm -hmm. to things today. She did that in a powerful way. I thought it was very beautiful, and I hadn't thought about that, even though I know all these MOVE members. And that's why people read books more than once. (laughs) People say, why do you keep looking over it? Because times change and life changes, and you have different understanding. And even you, as an expert on Du Bois, you might not have made a certain connection that somebody who's a first-time listener can help us make. That's why it's so beautiful to be in conversation about. Absolutely. And you know, know, uh, quote, expert on Du Bois, Mm -hmm. but you know, for me, it's more about understanding life, I hear you. understanding the, the realities of what we're living and our people are living right now. I find Du Bois to be clarifying, but I'm not a dogmatist. Mm. It's not Du Bois or nothing. It's Du Bois plus mm-hmm. the existential experience of, uh, of being black now. now. And it's very different than, let us say, in the uh, 1800s. Oh, yeah. but, but, you know, if I could just say no, no, one small thing, uh, Professor Smith. You know, 
This Zora, first of all, the name oh, Zora. Yeah. Uh, we we know the name Zora Neale yeah, Hurston, mm-hmm. the great anthropologist and and novelist. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But this Zora was before she was born. Wow! You know, this Zora was in the 1800s. The name Zora, but then her husband's name. Bless it. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, Du Bois is always, you know, making these symbolic connections. Mm -hmm. Uh, Bless it uh, was named that because his parents, when he was born, felt that he would contribute to our people's freedom. But bless it could not make that contribution without Zora, without Mm -hmm. this woman of the land, the woman of the swamp, the woman of the backwoods, who mm-hmm. whose desire for freedom had not been tarnished by the white world. Mm-hmm. And she she protests uh, throughout the novel, a good part of the novel, to Blessed. Blessed is always trying to get her, go to school. You know, there's this teacher from the north, Mrs. Taylor. You can trust her. Mm-hmm. And Zora constantly says, but that's white people's knowledge. And how can we take it and make it useful to us? And thus, the whole question of mm-hmm. how to make knowledge useful to people. That's still the question, that's right? St- that's still the question, <laughs> yes. Year of Du Bois. Dr. Anthony Montero, we thank everybody who participated in the program today. Mr. Brandon Wallace, President and CEO of Creator Roofing. We thank Baron Holland, Senior Vice President and Senior Relationship Manager for Business Banking at Bank of America. We thank Dr. Anthony Montero for joining us for the Year of Du Bois, yeah, the regular you, segment. We thank Kwesa, Super Producer, the Queen in the building doing the buttons, and me for doing a little something. I'll be talking.